Good morning and uh, welcome to the meeting of the Subcommittee on Zoning and Franchises. I'm Council Member Francisco Moya, the Chairperson of the Subcommittee. Uh, and today we have been joined by Council Member uh, Levin and we also have Council Member Traeger here. Uh, if, you ha if you haven't, uh, if you're ready to testify, please fill out a speaker slip with the Sergeant at Arms indicating your full name and application name or LU number. Uh, we will begin this meeting with uh, our vote today. Oops, sorry. Correction. Uh, our hearing today uh, will uh, begin with uh, pre-considered LUs for the 273 Avenue U rezoning uh, in Council Member Traeger's district in Brooklyn. Uh, the applicant seeks approval for a zoning map amendment and related zoning text amendment to rezone the project area from a R5B to an R6A district and establish a mandatory inclusionary housing area utilizing MIH option one and option two. As proposed, these actions would facilitate the development of a new four-story mixed-use building with ground floor residential use and approximately nine dwelling units. Uh, I now open the public hearing on this application, uh, and I want to turn it over to Council Member Traeger uh, for some remarks. Uh, I thank the Chair uh, for his leadership and uh, for his patience uh, and uh, time this morning, and I thank the committee. Um, this is... Uh, a rezoning application that has uh, a lot of meaning to my district, particularly in the Gravesend community. Um, this is a zoning application that uh, centers around a, a, an iconic um, neighborhood establishment uh, called Joe's uh, in, in, in our Southern Brooklyn community. I would argue some of the best rice balls in New York City, Mr. Chairman. So if you're ever around Gravesend, uh, Southern Brooklyn, come on down. Um, and so I, I'm, I, I'm very interested in hearing uh, more about uh, the application um, on uh, its impact on the restaurants and, and the surrounding um, uh, lots as well. Uh, and I thank uh, Joe's and, and, and their team for being here today to answer uh, our committee's questions. I look forward to this hearing. Thank you again, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Do we have the slips? No? Does anyone? Giuseppe Charamitaro and uh, Walter Maffey, right? Maffei, sorry. Good. So, please, what? Yep. So, so I'm just going to ask the council to swear you in. Thank you. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and that you will answer all questions truthfully? Make sure that you press the, the button. I do. Thank you. You may begin. The application that we filed for rezoning was to hop the street, so to speak. There currently is an existing R6 C2-3 zone, which uh, is on the east side of McDonald Avenue. And this application was put in to allow us to extend the R6 zone across the street, across McDonald Avenue, in order to allow uh, Mr. Chattamitato and others to advance the ability to build something a little bit more appropriate for the neighborhood. Currently, 
if you look at what we have on the screen, that's the site. We have a one-story commercial building which is uh, fronting Avenue U and it extends about 100 feet towards Lake Street. The area itself is um, underdeveloped. There is a four-story building which is directly adjacent to our site. If you look at the outlined red portion, that is our site, which is uh, essentially a taxpayer. This is the location. You'll notice that along the area, you have the R6A, which is right across the street from McDonald Avenue. And it's uh, very close to the Ocean Parkway Special District. So again, this is our site. We are basically directly adjacent to the F line along McDonald Avenue, which is the elevated train. And this is a, a picture of the facade and of the diverse occupancies that are currently occupying the, the building. This is a proposed elevation. You'll notice that it's only a four-story building. We propose to keep the commercial occupancy on the first floor with a separate residential entrance along Lake Street. It's in keeping with the, um, with the height of the adjacent building and is not going to impede or uh, denigrate the contextual feel of the area. So our presentation is to allow us to change the R6A and to extend that directly across McDonald Avenue uh, along the uh, commercial corridor of Avenue U. Uh, we did have approval through the City Planning Commission, the Borough President. At this point, we're just requesting that you do the same. And we appreciate your, your help and effort. Thank you. Um, if I can make a, yeah, a statement. So, uh, good morning. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Giuseppe Ciaramitaro. Uh, my grandfather and namesake, Giuseppe Ciaramitaro, uh, brought his family to the United States in the 1950s uh, in search of a better life and uh, first opened Joseph Avenue U in 1956. Uh, over the years, the restaurant has been passed through multiple members of my family, uh, including my uncle Vincent, my father Paul, uh, my aunts Francesca and Nina and it is currently being operated by our cousin Leonardo. Uh, the restaurant has dedicated itself to serving an honest meal at an honest price, and we hope to continue to serve the community for many, many years to come. Uh, today, we come before you with a proposal that will invigorate the retail property we have while providing some much needed residential units to Gravesend. Uh, over the years, our property has housed many community businesses, uh, from the famous Joe's of Avenue, to businesses across the spectrum, ranging from barber shops and nail salons, uh, to learning centers and martial arts schools, to cobblers and kitchen installers. Uh, we've enjoyed working uh, with a wide variety of mom and pop shops and are ha happy to have local businesses remain our tenants for many years to come. Uh, that said, however, the retail spaces that we have are in need of a refresh to help provide a visually appealing boost to the community and we'd like to take this opportunity to further develop our land by adding residential space. We are not a large real estate conglomerate. Uh, the property is owned by one immigrant family that was fortunate enough to prosper in this great city and buy the land on which its business stood. Uh, Chara for Realty uh, was comprised of four brothers and sisters. Uh, we recently lost my uncle Vincent. Bon compleanos you. Um, and so now we are three, and, and this is Charafor's only investment property. As such, we are looking to construct uh, within our modest means uh, a building that maintains the context of the neighborhood, rising no larger than four floors. Uh, we also intend to build using as much of the local workforce as possible, making our investment one that can benefit not only ourselves, but other Brooklyn businesses as well. Uh, thank you for your time and consideration, and uh, we would appreciate your support in helping us realize our vision. Thank you. Uh, I just want to acknowledge that we've also been joined by uh, Councilmember Rivera, 
Uh, just a couple of questions before I turn it over to um, uh, our Councilman. Uh, just quickly on what you were talking about, uh, local hires, can you describe your plans uh, to ensure MWBE uh, and local-based contractors and subcontractors participate in this development project? So we would certainly allow any anyone to bid on on this project. We wouldn't restrict uh, we wouldn't restrict it to a certain set of businesses or anything. I mean, we would be more than happy to uh, receive the resources from you, allowing us to publish bids. I mean, I'm, I don't know how this process works, but I certainly. It basically will be an open bid, and uh, primarily it would be geared towards. Um, contractors or providers who are locally sourced. Do you have a plan for how you would go about reaching out to local contractors and developers in the area? Well, typically what we would do is we would have to file with the Department of Buildings. Um, it's funny because we're normally contacted by contractors <laughs> immediately upon, mm -hmm. upon filing. So, um, but also we have a database of people within the area that we're familiar with. After all, we're both Brooklyn born and we're both from Brooklyn. And given the fact that my office is, is locally based, um, I kind of know who, who's good and who's not good. So there are always, um, there's always ability to find out uh, local contractors who would fit the bill as far as getting this building up. Great. We're looking. We're looking to try and be as sensitive to the community as possible. After all, we've been there for over 60 years, and by we, I mean I've been a, an architect in New York for over 40 years. So it is. Um, it is a long-standing situation where we're extremely uh, sensitive to the locals, and we want to make sure that this building represents a legacy uh, of the founders of, the, of that restaurant and this area. And uh, Walter is not only uh, my cousin on, on my mother's side, but he also worked in the restaurant when he was, uh, when he was young. So. Yeah, I worked in the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> I was the slave. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you uh, for that. I'm going to turn it over now to Councilmember Traeger for questions. Uh, thank you, uh, Chair Moya. Um, so the application, uh, this application maps MIH option two, but the development does not meet the threshold to require affordability through MIH. Can you confirm the total amount of zoning square feet in the proposed developments? I believe it was about 14,000 square feet. 14,000 square feet. Um, the application proposes a vertical enlargement on top of the existing uh, single story commercial building. Will Joe's of Avenue U remain open during construction or close and relocate into the new ground floor space or elsewhere? Well, currently the plans call for it to remain. We basically will have to adjudicate uh, to what extent we would have to structurally support the above, but there are options that allow us to maintain existing ongoing services within the building while this is being built above. Okay, and I think you know we spoke about this earlier, but just uh, for the record, um, are there any plans that you're aware of to, you know, relocate or close Joe's should this application proceed? No. So Joe's of Avenue U. But I shouldn't be answering that. He should yes. be answering that. Yeah. We, yes. We have no such plans. I mean, we want Joe's to remain a, a, a part of the community for a very long time you know, at the same location. Uh, I mean, that's uh, a lot of my heart and, uh, and you know, emotion is in, is in this, uh, this business. So it's something that we, we want to be, remain a part of Brooklyn. Yes. And Councilman, you said it yourself, this is a landmark. Yeah. I mean, people travel from far and wide to come to, for the uh, pulpo salad. Right. <laughs> and, and that's why, I, you know, you understand my initial, uh, my, my antennas went up when I heard about this because we want Joseph Avenue U to remain in Gravesend for many, many, many years to Absolutely. come. Absolutely. Uh, I can only state that if this application goes through, it would provide a boost to the community, which apparently is kind of run down. Uh, 
it, it's something that would reinvigorate, as Giuseppe said, the area, and it would bring in a little bit of new life, which I think it needs. Um, it's something that you could feel when you're out there. You just want something that gives it a twist. And it, it's high time for something al along that line. Right. I mean, I, I would just respectfully push back that's not run down. It's just that we in the city of New York are going through a tough time with regards to mom and pop shops and small businesses. So I would never want to be a part of something that would actually hurt uh, the neighborhood in terms of small businesses. We want to attract small businesses and Absolutely. retain mom and pop shops. I told Giuseppe that I want Ave Joseph Avenue to remain forever. I don't want a Papa John's here. Don't want a Domino's here. I want a Joseph Avenue U here with your amazing rice bowl and other great Italian dishes. Uh, and so that's my that's where my concern is coming from. Um, tell me about the other commercial tenants uh, and how this application uh, impacts them. So we currently have a, a barber shop, a nail salon, a, a Kuman Learning Center, and well, we had a, up, up until yesterday a martial arts school who uh, fortunately had to terminate their lease. Um, they weren't able to keep their their business going, uh, but. We would, I mean, in terms of, you're, you're speaking with respect to the, keeping the businesses after the construction. Like what happens to them during construction and the plan after construction? Right, so, you know, we don't, uh, I mean, I don't have a firm construction plan in place, right? We have this proposed building and that's what we were thinking. I mean, we have not worked on sorting out all these details because we, we didn't know if, we would get the, the application approved. Um, but we would certainly welcome them all to, to return once the construction was done. I mean, we don't want to, you know, we, we would keep multiple units. We wouldn't just make one large, we wouldn't make one unit for Joe's and then one unit for some other large, like we don't want a large tenant to come in. and. If I, if I may, Councilman, there will have to be modifications made to the Lake Street side, the commercial entities that are all along the Lake Street side, only for the, mere, for the purpose of reconfiguring the entrance for the proposed residential units above. In other words, there has to be a lobby space. And that, of course, will cut into a portion of one of the tenancies. So it, it's going to be a fluid situation. Of course, we're gonna to try to keep whoever we can keep but you have to be aware that um, in order to make an omelet, you're going to have to break some eggs. And in this case, we're going to have to break some eggs with regards to the relocation of a corner uh, tenant in order to accommodate the, uh, the entrance lobby for the upper residential So I, I would have two follow-up questions on that. Uh, are the folks aware of that? And number two, does Joe's have plans, Avenue U have plans of expanding the, the restaurant footprint? So we would certainly uh, decide on the, the, the spaces, the size of, of the restaurant. I mean, we could make it larger, especially because now the martial arts school has left and they were a fairly large uh, space. So, you know, it would be possible to reconfigure these spaces so that there's a larger footprint for Joe's. Mm -hmm. um, but. Um, okay, a couple of last questions. Um, can you just repeat again the, 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 the height of this planned development? It's a four-story development, so typically it's 40 feet. Um, it, will, it would be in character with the adjacent building which currently exists on the site. Right. I'm just noting from the feedback from the community board and the borough president that the zoning application, the zoning that's being requested allows to build higher than four feet, but you're saying that this is going to be a, a I'm sorry, four stories, four story development. Is that correct? Yes, under typical R6A, you're allowed to go up uh, six stories as an initial height. We don't feel that that's necessary here. What we're looking to do is to maintain this uh, as a contextual development, mm -hmm. which would be, as I stated previously in my comments, we don't want to, uh, to impose something on the neighborhood that really doesn't fit. We would much rather stay contextual within the area 
and thereby easing the building in place. In other words, it, does, it won't be a dramatic shift to the neighborhood. Um, and final question I have on the local hiring piece. In, in, in addition to uh, local contractors, there is a, a, work, a, a city workforce one center that we helped establish in Coney Island, not too far away, where a lot of local residents in Southern Brooklyn uh, who are working to build up their skills and qualifications to be a part of such a job site. Um, I, I would appreciate that there's a, a partnership uh, that's established with the local Workforce One Center uh, to have this pipeline of local residents who have the skills and qualifications and credentials uh, to be a part of neighborhood improvements in their own backyard. Well, that would be ideal. And right. I'm sure that if we settle on a general contractor, it would behoove us to have him work that into his agreement. Him or her, but yes. Right, correct. Right. So right. that way at least we'll have some control of the situation, but beyond that, typically the general contractor would have to be responsible for the hiring of people who are qualified to do this kind of work. Okay, uh, I, I will we'll, we'll continue to follow up and I thank the chair uh, for his time this morning. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for your testimony today. Um, I want to acknowledge that we've been joined by Council Member uh, Richards, uh, but thank you very much. Thank you very much. Have a thank great you. day. Uh, are there any other members of the public who wish to testify? Uh, seeing none, uh, I now close a public hearing on this application uh, and it will be laid over. And we are now going to go to our votes. Uh, today we will vote to approve LU 469 for the 38-01-23rd Avenue rezoning in Queens. The proposal would establish within an existing R5B district a C23 commercial overlay district to allow the applicant to seek a special permit for physical culture uh, establishment use from the Board of Standards and Appeals for the purpose of legalizing an existing gym and yoga studio, as well as to allow future use consistent with the proposed C2 district regulations. Uh, I note the original proposal was modified by the City Planning Commission to remove from the rezoning area the portion of the proposed C23 overlay beyond 100 feet north of 23rd Avenue and within 75 feet of Steinway Street. Uh, Council Member Constantinidis is in support of this application. We will also vote to approve LU 470 uh, for the 76 Drive and Austin Street rezoning in Queens. The proposal would rezone the existing R2 uh, zone district in the neighborhood of Forest Hills as an R32 district and would facilitate the legalization and expansion of use group four medical offices within existing buildings in the rezoning area. Councilmember Koslowitz is in support of this application. I now call for a vote to approve LUs 469 and 470. Uh, Council, please uh, call the roll. Chair Moya. Aye. Council Member Levin. Aye. Council Member Richards. Aye. Council Member Rivera. Aye. I have a vote of four in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. The items are approved and referred to the full land use committee. Please note that we will uh, be laying over LU 466. And this concludes today's meeting. I would like to thank the members of the public, my colleagues, uh, council and land use staff uh, for attending. This meeting is hereby adjourned. <laughs>